Matterhorn probably does provide a new standard of care for patients with operable gastroesophageal cancer, independent of PDL1 status. In the Destiny Gastric 04 study, what we saw was that, consistent with other studies, trastuzumab dextecan was associated with better response rates than chemotherapy. Here, just over 40% compared to just under 30% for amacerabab and paclitaxel. Hi, this is Lizzie Smith. I'm at ASCO 2025. Today, I'm going to discuss some upper GI oral presentations. The first is Matterhorn. Uh, for many years, perioperative chemotherapy and surgery has been a standard of care for patients with operable gastric cancer. However, despite triplet chemotherapy, usually FLOT and surgery, less than half of patients are cured of the disease. So there was a real unmet need for new therapies. We know that immunotherapy is effective in patients with advanced gastroesophageal cancer, but no immune checkpoint inhibitor or targeted therapy for that point has been uh, successful in clinical trials yet in this setting. So the Matterhorn study was a very large global phase three randomized trial. It recruited around 950 patients uh, over a period of two years, about 20% of patients from Asia. 70% of the patients in the trial had gastric cancer and 30% had junctional cancer. In Matterhorn, patients were randomized to either FLOT and surgery or FLOT plus Durvalumab and surgery. Durvalumab was given alongside FLOT twice before surgery and with FLOT after surgery, then for an extended adjuvant period of time. We've previously seen the results of surgical safety and pathological complete response. This showed that adding Durvalumab to FLOT did not stop patients going to surgery safely, did not increase surgical complications, and doubled pathological complete response rates to just under 20%. What we saw today were the results of an interim analysis that showed uh, an improvement in event-free survival. So event-free survival was the primary endpoint of the study. We saw that event-free survival was improved by about 30%. And in fact, at 18 months and 24 months after surgery, around 9 or 10% of more patients had not had a recurrence of their cancer. So relevant questions for this study include, is event-free survival valuable? Well, I think yes, certainly, because for patients with uh, advanced gastroesophageal cancer, we know that recurrence and metastasis cause a significant amount of morbidity. So event-free survival is very meaningful for this patient population. In advanced gastric cancer, we know that we use biomarkers to select for immune checkpoint inhibitors. And 90% of patients in Matterhorn had PDL1 at present on their tumor. So most we could assume would be immune sensitive population. We did see, in fact, a breakdown according to PDL1. And in fact, the hazard ratio of around 30% improvement stood for all PDL1 uh, positive and negative patients. So there was only a slight attenuation of the hazard ratio for patients who were PDL1 negative. So this is, in fact, a treatment for all patients. So I think what we could say uh, in summary was that Matterhorn probably does provide a new standard of care for patients with operable gastroesophageal cancer, independent of PDL1 status. The overall survival results are not yet mature. I guess we can look forward to those in the next year or so. We also saw the results of the Destiny Gastric 04 trial. For a number of years, uh, trastuzumab deroxtecan, which is an ADC targeting HER2, has been used in the second and third line setting for patients who have progressed after trastuzumab. This was based on the Asian study, Destiny Gastric 01, and a non-randomized, non-Asian study, Destiny Gastric 02. However, we had not had, in fact, a randomized phase three trial that demonstrated the value of this treatment for patients. In the Destiny Gastric 04 study, patients who had progressive disease after trastuzumab First, we're required to have a biopsy which showed retained HER2 positivity because we know that up to 50 or 60% of patients can stop expressing HER2 on their tumor after trastuzumab. So all patients entering the study did still have high levels of HER2 expression. Patients were randomized to either ramosermab and paclitaxel, a good control arm which didn't underperform, or to trastuzumab deroxtecan. What we saw was that Consistent with other studies, trastuzumab deroxtecan was associated with better response rates than chemotherapy. Here, just over 40% compared to just under 30% for amacerabab and paclitaxel. Progression-free survival was marginally improved by only 1.1 months, which was a little bit of a surprise, but this did translate into an overall survival benefit of more than three months. So certainly these results have reinforced the value of trastuzumab deroxtecan 
for patients who have retained HER2 after trastuzumab therapy. Issues that we usually consider with respect to trastuzumab directs taken include detection and management of interstitial lung disease. In this study, most interstitial lung disease was grade one and grade two. No fatalities were noted. Nausea also does seem to be a problem for patients with trastuzumab directs taken, occurring in up to 45% of patients. So close attention to side effects and monitoring and mitigation of these is important for patient quality of life. Thank you for joining us at ASCO 2025 and goodbye.